Hi students, welcome back. We're going to look at frequency separation in our video here. This is going to actually help to fix skin tones in the image and also the blemishes in her skin. Uh, she specifically has a lot of blemishes in her forehead and on her nose here, and we're also going to look at actually um, softening the skin and making it a much better image. To do this, uh, we're going to do this in Photoshop, so we're going to open this up, image up in Photoshop to get started. As this image opens in Photoshop, uh, we're going to work on the skin to actually do that, but we're going to create an action first so that if we have to do this again and again and again, which is generally what I have to do when I'm working with models and, and working with uh, uh, por doing portraiture, um, I'll need to do this um, over and over again. So there's no reason in actually spending a lot of time uh, doing the things that I'm getting ready to show you um, over and over again when I can actually just create an action to do that. Uh, first thing that we're going to do is we are going to um, start uh, by creating an action. So to create an action, we're going to go up here to this icon right here and to Actions. If, you, if Actions is not open, go to Windows and then choose Actions or Alt F9. Uh, once you have the Actions palette open here, we are going to um, create a new subset and we'll call this um, by our name um, or whatever. I'll just put Michael here for, um, for my subset in uh, Photoshop. So now I have my own, own subset. Uh, once I have the subset made, I'm going to create a new action within there. So I'll ch check the little plus button over here with a square around it. We're going to call this frequency separation. Frequency separation. There we go. We got a frequency separation. It is going to go into the Michael group that I just created. We can also give this hotkeys. So uh, let's say we go with F4 and control. And uh, then we can also add a color um, to it. So um, we're going to hit record and start recording. Now this is going to record as this is now selected here. It's recording everything I do in Photoshop. So if I make any mistakes, it's going to record those too. Uh, just so be aware. If you do need to stop the recording at any time, you can actually hit the stop button over here to stop by recording or if you have finished. Um, the other option um, to, um, to be aware of is that it, uh, if you stop, you can actually do something that you didn't want to have it do or undo something, go in and actually remove uh, bad things in the, that you've added in or maybe you've made a mistake, need to add that in to, or take those out. You can go in and delete those parts of the uh, frequency or within the frequency separation action or any action that you've created. Now that we've started, we're going to duplicate this uh, background twice. Now this is going to be uh, two times that we're going to delete the, or uh, duplicate that. And then we're going to select both by hitting the shift key and uh, clicking on the other layer down here and then dragging these down to the group. And we're going to put those into a group and we're going to um, retitle this frequency separation. The other op, uh, thing that we want to do here is, and you'll notice that everything that I've been doing has been recorded. We're also going to rename these. The top one, um, we're going to rename texture for the top layer. and Or we could also, um, some people like to call it high. This could be the uh, high frequency. And this one on the bottom would be the, be the low frequency or the Gaussian blur frequency. So we're just going to call this one Gaussian Blur. Once we have those renamed, and those are actually renamed here, um, we've got these done. We're going to go into the got. We're going to make sure we're clicked on the Gaussian Blur. And just so that you can see this, I'm going to turn off the eyeball here, which will actually uh, be part of this. It won't matter um, at all, but this way you can see what's going on. Um, we're going to go to Gaussian um, Blur up here. So we're going to go, come up to the filters, go to Blur, and then Gaussian Blur. And we're going to add a blur of about five to this. Now, this all depends on the size of the uh, um, person in the image. If she was any bigger, I might want to add a little bit more to the radius. If she was small, even smaller than this, I might add a little less, uh, just depending on um, the size of the individual in the image. Five generally works best uh, overall though, so I'm just gonna go with five. 
and I'm going to click OK. Once I have that, that's blurred the image and it's blurred the Scotsian background uh, layer here. Um, we're just going to leave that alone. Um, we're going to turn the texture layer back on and now we've got all of our sharpness back uh, from our original image. But in the texture, we're going to change this in the way it works. To do that, we're going to go to Image, and then we're going to come down here to Apply Image. And under Apply Image, we're going to make sure that we leave the source alone, but that we change this to Gaussian Blur, and then we're going to leave our RGB alone, come down here, and instead of Multiply, we're going to change this over to Subtract, and it's going to turn this gray here. We want to make sure our value or our opacity is set at um, 100. Our scale is set to 2, and our offset is set to 128. So once we've got that done, we'll hit OK. And then we need to change this layer that's uh, uh, through its layer uh, properties here. We're going to come down here, and we're going to change this uh, to linear light. And that's going to bring it back up, and it's going to look normal now, and we're going to be back to normal. We're going to stop our frequency separation um, uh, action because we have pretty much completed it. And we're going to, just to test it, I'm going to throw this frequency separation away. And then I'm going to come up here to the where it says frequency separation, click on there, and hit play. Or I could hit uh, Command uh, Control F4 on my keyboard on my PC here. Or if you're, uh, you know, if, whatever you've set your um, your uh, control or your actions, uh, F keys, hot keys to. I'm going to hit play, and that should, if I've done this correctly, create that whole dynamic that we just had. That folder and everything in here is done. So for now on, if I come in and I'm using my computer and I actually need to get to this, um, get this done on a particular image, I can do this. Now, one thing that um, I didn't mention in class, but I'm going to mention now, um, and, um, and this is a really great thing to know, is that if I wanted to uh, say, you know, with the Scotsian Blur, I said, you know, that maybe you might need to change this particular part here. You can put in what's called a stop. And what that will do, uh, for example, is I need to find the... Um, the uh, area here where um, it's going to make that. So let's come down through here. We're going to go to Gaussian Blur right there, and we're going to put a stop. Now the stop here will tell the action to stop and let me choose how much Gaussian Blur I want to add to my image. So that stop will help that do that. Um, the, we also might want to do that at applying image. Now let me show you how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw this frequency separation away again. And I'm just going to start back up here at the top and go to the frequency separation um, action here and hit play. And what you'll see is once it's uh, got to the Gaussian blur, um, it asks me, do I want to increase this, decrease it, whatever. So I could increase it if I wanted, hit OK. And that's going to increase it. If I wanted to fix it here and do it here, maybe I wanted to change this to three as far as scale goes, then I could hit three and hit OK. Um, it's telling me I need a value between, uh, so I've got that set wrong there. I think I could go to one here, so I could change it to one, and that's going to change, um, do a little bit different uh, look, view, or look to the image. So anyway, uh, the point being that I can actually make changes to uh, this through uh, the actions options here. So I'm going to um, hit, um, I'm just going to throw this away one more time here. I'm going to hit play. When it stops here, I'm going to make sure it's at five. And uh, this is set to this now. I'm going to go ahead and set that back to two and hit OK. And that's now got my image just the way I want it um, to start with. So once we have our, uh, our, uh, our action made here, we're going to start working on the image. Now to do this, you're going to need to zoom in really tight. I know some of you have some problems with zooming. There are uh, multiple ways. You could come down here and uh, click on the, the uh, zoom tool and then zoom in. But the fastest way is actually never to leave, uh, have to run over here and grab the, these tools over here if you can help it. So in this case, uh, as long as this is set to scrubby zoom up here, 
um, this will help me to actually get in and around the image really quickly. So I'm going to um, just uh, come back over here to, um, to the tool that I'm going to want here in just a moment, which is actually the lasso tool. So I'm going to choose the lasso tool for what I'm going to be doing. And I'm going to set that to 32. And uh, this is uh, the amount of feathering that we're going to add. So this is the outside edge and how soft that outside edge is going to be. We want a lot of feather so that when we're working, we're actually going to be making sure that we're, um, uh, you know, uh, making it really soft around the edges so that we don't really, we don't create any hard edge issues. Um, I need to make sure that I've selected Gaussian blur down here in my layers because this is the first area that I'm going to work on. Again, back to the zoom thing here. I'm going to hit the space bar and the control key, and that's going to be a plus. So I can uh, zoom in and out just like this. And I can then use my hand, the space bar as my hand tool to move up and down. So I can zoom right in on the area of the subject that I want to work on. Once I have that done, the next thing that I need to do is I need to start working. To do this, I am going to select a patch of skin, an area of the skin, just like this. Now, I don't want to get too close to the edge of the hair here because of that feather. That feather is going to pull in information from the edge here, so I don't want to pull that hair in or any of that value of the hair. So I need to make sure that I'm sticking a little ways away from these areas here because that feather is going out there pretty broadly. Once I have that, I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and I'm going to set this to 50 this time. So I'm going to run this way up here. This is a lot of blur. So right about around 50. If I need to, if I want it exact, I can always type it in. As you can see, once I hit Enter, it did this. It uh, cleaned this up really, really nicely. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do this again on this side of the face. Trying to, again, avoid getting too close to the outside edges there. And this generative fill thing, I'm going to, if you have a problem with this like I have right now, I'm going to move this down here at the bottom here and then click on these uh, triple icons here and then just pin the bar position so that it stays out of my way. Um, once I have this uh, ready to go here, I'm going to go back to filter. And up here at the top, it will put in the last filter used. Or I can hit Alt, Control, F or Alt-Command-F on the, the Mac keyboard. So I'm just going to click that. That is going to fix that one. Then I'll come down here, and I'm going to do the nose next. And filter again, Gaussian Blur, and we're just going to keep doing this around the image until we start to actually... What we're doing is, is we're blending the colors in the face. So we're taking all the colors here and blending them in the face. So again, Gaussian blur, and uh, I'm just repeating the Gaussian blur over and over again in the facial areas. And you'll notice that uh, as I do this, that I'm cleaning up the color in the face more so than anything else. So that it's blending the colors nicely. I may even need to do a smaller area here like this. And if, it, if I didn't select a big enough area, it's going to tell me. So I can't do that little tiny area by itself. I may have to go back in and, you, and shrink my feather and uh, do it that way. Filter again, Gaussian Blur. And we're going to do one more section here. And I got a little close, too close to the edge over there. I don't know if you noticed that. I got a little too close over here. So I'm going to hit the Alt key, which is the minus key, and subtract a little bit of this just like that, and that actually should do me much better. Um, I'm going to hit Gaussian Blur again, and now you can see how much I've cleaned up the face. So if we take a look at this, we can actually see the difference in the tonality and the color in the image. Okay, it's already starting to get softer. Now, don't worry about it being overly done, because uh, that's something that people worry about um, all the time when we, they do this. Uh, we're going to actually overdo most of this, and then we're going to go back in and we're going to undo it. Now, I would continue to do the rest of the body here, including her underarms, her arms, everything, as far as her skin goes, to give her the best skin complexion that I possibly can. 
So once I have her, I've, I'm just going to do the face for this video. Um, so we've got the uh, face here uh, pretty much done and the way we want it. I do see a little bit of uh, area right here that I would still like to get um, uh, fixed a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get that to clean up just a slight bit better. Notice I got it too close to that hair and I got a little darkness in here, but it won't. Uh, it's not going to be that big a deal. I probably won't even ever notice it. Deselect. And um, once I have this uh, done, I am the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to work on my texture layer. So I'm going to come here to texture and I need to take a look around the face for a good area that is nice and smooth. And this area right in here is nice and smooth. I could also come down and take a look at uh, other areas of the skin, like maybe here in her arm. Um, notice how big her pores are here. She has really big pores um, on her face, and we're going to shrink those pores a little bit um, and, uh, try to, and try to remove some of them. And that's what the texture is all about. I'm going to actually flatten this out a little bit more so that there's not as much much texture here. And uh, so I'm going to come in and I'm going to select an area here. Now to do this, um, I'm going to actually start by selecting the area that I want to fix. Um, and so the tool that I want is uh, down here a little bit further. I'm so used to having uh, my computer set up a little differently at um, um, at work that I, I've forgotten where the patch tool was here. I'm looking for the patch tool, which is this tool right here. And I'm just going to show you on the chin here. We'll just start on the chin. And I'm just going to select this area of her chin. And I know this is going to be about the right size to go take down and onto her shoulder there where there's nice skin to work with. So I'm going to bring this down right under her shoulder down here. And as you can see, it's right there on that shoulder. Look how nicely that cleaned up that skin right there and how much smoother that is. So we're going to do that again by just grabbing this, and dragging this down here and dropping this onto her skin on her shoulder. Uh, this could be, you could use a very small part of the face to do this with. Um, any place where you think and feel that the uh, texture is at its best for what you're doing. So I'm just going to grab this and, and go down here and do this. And you notice I'm, I'm just getting it out of the same place because that area is really nice and clean. Now that I have this kind of cleaned up here, I'm going to come up here and start grabbing the area here and dragging it down onto this nice little area that I've, I've already created. And then I can just repeat this, uh, these steps all the way through. So I'm just going to keep going and uh, just fixing the skin. Now, if you have any blotchy areas or anything, that is uh, showing up constantly. I am repeating a lot of stuff uh, through uh, basically uh, some of the textures getting repeated, maybe too often, but by the time we're done, it's not gonna matter that much. So I'm um, not too worried about it at the moment. I'm just gonna keep going here and clean this up nicely as much as I possibly can. So I'm gonna grab the nose here, parts of the nose, soften this up, that nose up, I grab some of this under the eye here, do the same thing, soften that up. Uh, if you do grab uh, sometimes like pimples or things like that, that can't, or um, areas of the skin that are splotchy, that can actually start showing up in the, um, in the, the uh, way that you're uh, creating this. So just be aware of that. So I'm going to keep on doing this, just making this nice uh, cleaned up area down here. Getting this nice and cleaned up. And I always find the forehead, uh, I have to do a lot more work with it generally. Um, so I'm going to keep going here and just uh, start pulling in some of that. And then um, I can grab a little area here and then just drop it right here on the forehead as soon as I get enough made that it'll actually start cleaning it up really nicely. So we've about got it ready here. We're almost getting close to being done. We're going to pull back and take a look at it, and I'll show you how ugly it actually is here in a moment. It's just way overdone, and that's okay. That's what we want is it to be way overdone. Uh, if you find anything, like I've got a little patch, this little patch here that keeps showing up. I've got a little patch over here. I'm going to see if I can get rid of that. Um, I'm going to get this a little bit here. 
And I'm just going to look around, and make sure I've got everything that I want to soften uh, done. And it looks like I've got most everything. I could use a little bit of work over here on this. And um, let's see here, a little bit on the cheeks over here. Let's see if we can get really close to these cheeks edges. And I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to grab this and drag this over here. And that took care of that issue. And that's why I get this nice softness. Now, pimples like this, if I brought it up here, yeah, I can get rid of the pimple. Um, however, we're going to be uh, bringing some of this information back here in a minute. Uh, I can see a little, a few little blotchy areas here. I'm just going to see if I can get rid of those blotches uh, in the skin. You may have some areas that don't uh, that uh, are right next to hair that might be harder to get rid of or fix. Um, I've got a nice little area over here on the nose that I want to fix. Uh, some area here. Let's see, some blotching on the skin there, trying to fix it. And there, once we have it all fi fixed and finished, uh, we're ready to move on to our next step. The next step is pretty simple, actually. We're just going to make sure that we've um, deselected everything. So Command-D to deselect and make sure that that's that. And then we're going to zoom back out, and we're going to take a look at this. Now, look how flat um, she looks. She looks really flat. The next part is very simple. Just come over here to your frequency separation. You can work on these separately. Um, I don't recommend it. Uh, they're a little harder to work. Uh, once you start making some major changes to these, it can be uh, it can affect overall and not work very well. Uh, but um, what I typically will do is come over here to the folder itself, go to the opa uh, folder's opacity, and change the opacity, and generally I'll find it about 50% or so, I start getting this nice softness. It brings back some of those original pores, so I'm actually starting to see some of the pores that are, are still underneath this, and um, I actually start to get this these nice color, the, some of her color back um, and, and everything. Now, this is still a problem right here, this area here, so I'll do it separately, so I'll just now Create a new layer above uh, the uh, frequency separation. Come in and um, actually clean it up with a, uh, um, a uh, healing brush. And select the area, of course, that I want to heal with a nice brush and also a nice soft brush. So let's make sure we've got a nice soft brush here. And um, I'm going to um, come over here and just finish fixing this uh, as I know it's going to be an issue. So um, we'll just fix this and get it ni uh, nice and cleaned up. And once I have this all cleaned up, uh, you'll see a big, huge difference in the way this looks. So there we go. We got this pretty much done. A little bit more uh, fixing there, um, and then we'll get the rid of this rosacea on our nose. And um, once that is completed, which is just about done, I might come in and find any other like really bad splotches on her skin that have survived the process, or maybe even some hairs. Um, that one didn't work very well for me, but I'm going to get rid of some hairs here. Um, uh, there's a couple of moles here that I might get rid of, depending on uh, what I'm uh, going to use this for, uh, but certain things I'll, I'll come in here and get rid of. And then by the time I'm done with this and um, I take a look at the final product here, um, I'm just going to zoom back out here, and we can take a look. And this is her whole face here. And if we turn off these two items here, you can see what a difference we have made within the skin and how much uh, more glowy she looks, how much more smooth her skin looks. And if we want, we can always come in and we can turn the opacity further down on the uh, frequency separation if we think it needs it. Um, and do that typically before you start working above, because uh, that then it won't blend as well. But uh, this is just a good, really good way to actually help increase uh, your model's uh, skin tones and make them much prettier. Um, our next little video is going to be on um, uh, retouching eyes, nose, lips, and, and also using the liquify tool. So um, come back and watch that next video um, if you need it.